Okay. So today's topic, graphics. Ta-da, there it is. So first of all, a warning. Manipulating graphics in Java by writing code from scratch is very challenging, especially for novices. So there's a lot of weird quirks, weird rules uh, that are involved. It's very easy to lose track of the component order, or layout types, which attributes have priority. So the problem with that is if, if you're new to all this, that these problems will not be caught by the IDE. They can be syntactically valid, but they violate whatever priorities Java expects to find for these uh, GUI windows. And that means that the programs are very, very difficult to debug. You can spend hours trying to chase down a problem that's not even there. So the other thing is, of course, all this time that you're spending tracking down graphics bugs, that means it's going to be harder to find these non-graphical bugs, right? You can, again, spend lots of time thinking, oh, it's something wrong with how I'm doing the graphics, but you're not. There's another problem that's not about the graphics, and you got to try to find that. So this whole thing can be kind of a nightmare. If you've if you've been having any trouble at all with debugging to this point in the course, well, graphics are just going to make it a little bit worse. So three recommendations to deal with that. Number one, find and reuse code wherever you find it, right? There's no need to reinvent the wheel. If you find something out there that does more or less what you want to do, grab that bit of code, reuse it, update it to however it needs to be exactly in your system. Number two, program in small chunks, right? This is always good advice when you're getting started, but for graphics specifically what it means, add on a single component or a single function at a time. Verify that it works. If it doesn't work and you've checked over the syntax and it all looks valid, chances are it's some sort of weird quirk with how Java does graphics and you might wanna to go to a site like Stack Overflow and see if you can figure out how they did it. Anyway, uh, last thing, in the short run, Try different approaches, right? So in the long run, sure, you want to learn how to code Java better. But in the short run, if you got to get some application up and running, like say for a homework assignment that's due, sometimes it's better to just try an entirely different approach instead of trying to, you know, get stuck fixing one particular bug. So even I have done this sometimes that, you know, Windows not working right, I just blow it up, try it again from scratch in a different way, like with a different layout manager or a different sequence of components. And sometimes that fixes the problem. So often that's uh, the quicker thing to do. I'm gonna fire up uh, Eclipse here. There it goes, and we'll get started with that presently. So first of all, the graphics class. Graphics is an abstract class. If you recall, we mentioned abstract classes the other day around uh, interfaces. Abstract class means you can't create objects of graphics. So graphics is a super class. You can create objects of graphics subclasses, but not of graphics itself. So remember also that when we're drawing something, so those of you who are around for the Connect4 demo, when we're drawing something, we have a graphics object that we use as a paintbrush. So what we do, even though graphics is an abstract class, we have subclasses of graphics, and all of those subclasses of graphics are still special types of graphics. So they can do all the things that a regular graphics objects can do. So we can essentially draw with them. So all these different subclass objects, they're all different kinds of paintbrushes. And the one we'll typically use for this is 2D, which is, you know, a basic two-dimensional brush. So the nice thing about this method is that any Java virtual machine can specify a graphics object for its own, you know, hardware configuration. So wherever the graphics card is, however much memory it has, whatever, it can specify its own graphics types based on its own local properties. So basically the Java virtual machine, when it does that uh, initial mapping, when you're installing it to your machine, it provides uh, a specific type of graphics class that's specific for your operation, operating system and your hardware configuration. All right, so I'm giving my daughter a little extra time. There you go. All right, and anyway, so the graphics class, uh, it's in java.awt.graphics, but if you import java.awt.star, you get all that. Okay, so graphics class has a whole bunch of methods for drawing lines and filled shapes. So we're gonna do something real simple to start with. We're just going to make a uh, frame class and then add a big panel to it and we can draw straight on the panel. So we'll be up here in a second. Uh, let's call it L frame. So we're given a main method and all of our standard stuff that we do. So L frame, J frame. Okay, we're going to do our imports. And 
Okay, so we got all that stuff. And then in our main method, we're going to create the new graphics object. We'll have a uh, we'll have a constructor. Create the new frame rather. And then the last one. Okay, so these are the four basic things that you always want to have if you're creating a frame to be visible. Give it a size, give it a title, set its default close operation to exit on close, and then make it visible. And then all the uh, building we'll do in here. So in our main method, we're going to create the L frame. Okay, and then we're just going to wait for stuff to happen. So for example, we could draw it. Okay, we could draw it. Let's uh, let's add a J panel. So, uh, but we're going to need to make a uh, custom J panel class. So first of all, when you're drawing graphics, you're going to want to do custom classes. So we're going to make a custom panel class here. So class L panel, then J panel. And this one is going to be just custom panel for drawing graphics. Okay, so it has an L panel. And here we're going to say we'll verify this all works correctly and it should because it's pretty standard. Boom, there we go. We got our graphics window and it's all grayed out because we got that panel there. If I wanted to, I could uh, set it, right? So LP dot uh, set background and we'll do a new color. Let's do green. Okay. And boom. So we have our panel on there. Great. Now, next thing. Uh, so graphics has all of these uh, methods. So there's sets of line methods and there are sets of fill methods. So the line methods are just going to draw the outline of a, of a shape. The fill methods are going to draw in a filled polygon, for example. So uh, if you have draw a line, you give it a pair of X coordinates and a pair of uh, Y coordinates and it'll draw the line between them. If you draw a rectangle, it'll specify that give it the top X and the top Y and it'll fill it and then the width and the length to do it. If you want to draw a polygon, you can give it an array of X and Y coordinates and tell it how many points it has and it'll draw the loop around and collect, connect them back at the end. Uh, also, anytime you're doing these coordinates for the basic Java graphics elements, they're all going to be specific to the component where the drawing happens. So for example, right, if I have a frame like this and I have inside it another uh, batch of four panels, I've split it up into a two by two grid layout, for example. Okay, so something like that. And each of those has its own color, let's say. Okay, if that's the batch that I'm doing, then if I want to draw something else at coordinates 0, 0 or 10, 10, 10, right, it could be at this corner of this one. If I draw it on this panel, it'll be here. If I draw it on this panel, it'll be here. So anytime I use a coordinate pair, it's going to be specific to the particular component I'm drawing on, right? It won't, if I say 300 comma 300, and this is uh, too small for that, it's not going to draw it in the middle of the window. It's just going to say, oh, that's outside the bounds of this thing. So it's not going to get drawn. Okay. Now, first thing is paint. So the paint component, which is the parent class of all of these J components like J panels, has a paint method that tells how to display the graphics. Uh, there are three things that happen when you call the paint method. And one of the things that when you draw your window for the first time, that paint method automatically gets called. So first, it draws the component itself. Then it draws its border if, if applicable, not all components have a border, and then it paints any children. So any components stacked on top of that one 
it draws them. In general, you don't need to do anything with paint unless you're overriding it. So paint is one of those methods you can leave alone. You don't want to change this configuration of things happening. However, you know, if none of your objects have a border and you want to streamline your code, make it run a little faster, you know, you might bypass some of these steps. But in general, you don't need to do anything with paint. Uh, and in general, again, good practices change only what's necessary for your application to run the way it's supposed to run. Most of the time when you're doing Java stuff, it, you're not worried about it performing lightning fast. I mean, it's going to be fast enough, but if you really wanted to do it fast, you would have programmed it in some machine specific language like C++. Once you start getting into Java in the first place, you're saying, yeah, this, this will work, but it's maybe not going to be the cutting edge graphics that operate at super fast speeds. Okay. The one that we're interested in to draw custom graphics is paint component. That paints the thing itself. So if we override it, okay, we got to do this and I should, I'm going to make an edit to this. It should be protected void paint component because this is So this is the thing that we want to include. I'll explain it in a minute. So this method, again, paint component will be called whenever the L panel is painted. And it automatically receives a graphics object, right? When other methods call it from outside this class. So for example, when it gets drawn the very first time, we don't have to worry about specifying a gra graphics object. You can see the stuff gets drawn even if we don't do anything with it. The graphics option again, the graphics object is the paintbrush for this component. So if we wanted to draw something, right, we could do, for example, G dot, let's do a draw a rectangle Whoop. or a filled rectangle. Go rect. Okay, so again, X, Y width height. So we can start at say 15, 15, and give it a height of say 300 by 400. And we'll draw a rectangle. Okay, the other thing we gotta do, we gotta give it a color. So we'll do G dot, what goes well on green? I don't know, let's do purple. G dot set color, uh, color dot, let's see what we got to work with. There is a magenta. Let's see how magenta goes. Okay, and let's draw it. Ta da! There it is. So, drawing graphics is pretty simple, right? You have a background color, anything you want to draw on top of that, you override the uh, object's paint component method, and that does what it needs to do. Okay, because paint component is the method that draws the thing in the first place. So normally, if you're drawing a graphics object, by default, it doesn't have any content. If you want to draw something special for it, you override the paint component. You respecify that method. And this line here, we call the paint component method of the superclass. So all the stuff that would normally happen for this object, if we want that to happen, we can do that. Now, you don't always need it. For example, if I draw this, let's see what happens. Aha, see? When I called the super class, it drew the background first and then the foreground stuff on top of it. So without that, that's what we get. All right. Anyway, that's why we call the super class. Uh, we call JPanel's regular drawing method so that it gets drawn in the same way. And the nice thing about this super, right? We're calling the uh, side here. Start by drawing L panel the same way as a J panel. We can do this quicker. It's much quicker to do it this way. Then we don't have to know what the J panel's method is. However, if we wanted to customize it more, we could look up how J panel's paint component is written and borrow that code 
and use whatever we needed in our own uh, in our own method. If we wanted to, we could skip the super dot paint component. Draw in some custom way, but we need to know more about how components are drawn. That's it. Okay, so by calling super, we basically we can draw our window the same way that an ordinary J panel would get drawn without knowing anything about how a J panel actually is coded up. So that's very quick for coding. Okay. Now, if you want to refresh something after it's been drawn, you can have a repaint method to do that. So repaint will draw graphics components that are already visible. So to make this work, we're gonna put a button. We're gonna do something very simple here. Implements action listener. Okay, so we've got that. Now we have to include the action performed method. We've done that. And then the last thing we'll do here, we'll say uh, color C equals color dot red. And we'll change the background color on uh, LP. So LP dot set background color to C. Okay, now where's our button? We're gonna add a button to this. So J button JB equals new J button. Okay, we're gonna add the button to it. So we're going to say LP dot add JB. Oh, so not LP, not JP, LP. One second, I see there's a chat thing there. And then JB dot add action listener. Debbie, shh. Put your headphones on, sweetie. Okay, so when we do this, well, LP, do that twice. We verify that this add action, oh, uh, JB, sorry. There we go. Ta -da. Okay, so when I run this, it should happen. Where's my button? There's my button. There it goes. I'll give it a label because otherwise it's kind of silly. New J button. So there I see the red button and then boom, it redraws it. So again, normally if things are going to get redrawn as a background color, that's automatic. It's an inherent attribute of the thing because it's just one sheet of color and Java will automatically take care of that. However, if you wanna do something different, if you wanna actually change how uh, the foreground colors look, then it's a little bit more involved. All right, so let's see what we got here. Oh, the override just means that it's from another class. So anytime, you know, you uh, bring in a new method through one of these automated things, it'll make various new notes, right? So like if you create a, uh, a new class, let's call it class. If I give it a main method, sweetie, if I give it a main method, it'll put in some text like that. It's just a comment. So it says here, this is an auto-generated method stuff. It's not something that I authored myself. You ask to do it. Likewise, anytime you include uh, one of these interface classes and you bring in all the new things, it'll put a little at override. So I'll say, this is not something that you wrote yourself. This is something that overrides, you know, a method that would normally belong to that interface. You're writing a, a custom version of it to use in your class. Yeah. Okay. So that's what repaint does. So. Repaint, uh, normally if you add components to an already visible graphical object, the graphics don't update. Again, things like uh, changing the foreground colors, stuff like that, it's not automatically gonna change. The reason is just for performance. These checks, they happen very frequent, frequently. They happen, you know, dozens of times per second, uh, maybe even hundreds of times, depending on the situation. So if you are constantly checking for that stuff and actually allowing the potential of update, your window would start looking really flickery and kind of cruddy. So Java waits for you to actually specifically tell it to repaint the components. Now, if you call repaint for the top level container, it's gonna repaint all the components and their child components. But 
the component hierarchy, none of that's gonna be any different. Okay, so repaint works if all you've done is change graphics on components, but haven't changed the structure of the window. Okay, so I can do this. I can do, uh, for example, I can call lp.paintComponent, but it'll automatically do that. One thing I can do, I can give it a, uh, I could give it a Boolean, right? So I could Boolean is red equals false. Okay, so anytime I do this, anytime I call paint component, I could put in something like this. I could put if is red, oh no, let's do uh, is magenta. I'm gonna change the foreground color, is magenta. Typing is hard. I have a mechanical keyboard here and the desk is just a slightly bit, slight bit wobbly. And that creates troubles. Okay. Another bit more intense. Else, g dot set color. Let's just have it be red otherwise. Color dot red. Color dot orange. Is that orange? We'll just do orange. Okay, so now anytime I call paint component, right, it's gonna do this stuff. So if I wanted to, I could say lp.setBackground and likewise I could do lp. Uh, is magenta equals false. I gotta change that. Vivi, if you're gonna be talking, I might have to send you into Walter's room or your room, okay? Okay, thank you, sweetie. Here's my daughter, she's going off on her. There she is, Whee! say hi, Vivi. Yeah, there she is, okay. Anyway, so normally you would think, oh, I'm changing this is magenta field. And so when I do that, the graphics should automatically update. Well, it won't. Okay. This thing here should have been orange, but it's not. If I want that to happen, I got to do repaint. Okay, this dot repaint. When I do that, eh, didn't want to do that. G dot set color. What is going on here? Not sure why it's doing that. Did I mess something up? Oh, I'm doing it to false, geez. Duh. What is going on here? Is magenta equals false? Oh, I've just written my code screwy, okay? Is magenta is true. Otherwise I set it to false, there we go. Now it should work the way I thought. There we go, and it's orange, okay? So the point is, if you want, I'm going to be back here and talking. If you want your component foregrounds to refresh, you need to call repaint, right? And it should have worked for the whole window too, so that should be fine. You could either do just a single component or you could do the whole window, right? Because if you start with the base, it's going to refresh all the components on top of it. Your frame or the individual. Okay. So, questions about that? That's uh, the simple thing about how repaint works. Does this all make sense? How's everybody? Okay, doing good, wonderful. All right, well, let's move on then. We have just a few more slides, because like I said, it's a quick lecture. So the next thing, if you actually change the component hierarchy, you need to call a different method called validate. So 
any top level container, if it adds components with the hierarchy, you can do that. But again, this is a computationally expensive thing. So the system is not going to check that, you know, dozens or hundreds of times a second. Again, it's Java is going to wait for you to tell the window that something changed and you need to restructure it. Okay, so anytime something gets a little weird with the hierarchy, if you add a new component after it's drawn or you try to get rid of one, weird and unpredictable things can happen. So in order to allow your window to update it for any structural changes, you have it called this validate method. Okay, so anytime you wanna change the component hierarchy or change the arrangement of components within that hierarchy, you need to call validate to do that. And then it'll make that happen in your window. So for example, Suppose I want to uh, <coughs> have a different panel, right? So I'll say uh, L panel LP base equals new L panel. Okay. If I wanted to do something different, and I'll, I'll make two more. LP one new L. Uh, you know what, I'm just gonna make a button, make a new damn button. Okay, so I'll do uh, J button, JB2. And I'll have this one be magenta. So I'm not adding this button initially, but what I want to do is if I'm gonna add an update button that I will add, so J, Okay, and I'll add that one to start with. So jlp.add jp update and jp update add action listener to this. And I'm going to do this here action perform. So this one will be if e.get source equals jb okay else okay here's what happens if i press the update button and for the update button JP update, there should be one. JP update, okay, JB update, that's fine. Okay, so anytime I press this uh, JB update button, I wanna try to rebuild my window. So I'll do this, I'm gonna say uh, general process, and you can simplify it if you want, but one thing you could do is simply destroy the window and rebuild it. So for example, I could, if I wanted to change how the J, the L panel was set up, I could do lp.remove JB, okay, then lp.add uh, JB magenta. I had one, JB2, okay. I could add the new button, okay, and then lp.add jb and I would re do it without the update button and then I could do uh, lp I guess that's it I just do validate and if I wanted to I could do repaint although it's somewhat redundant so we'll see how that goes okay so I have this update button red still works update aha see now there it threw that stuff oh I have to remove my update button as well so uh, okay, so if you want to change the layout, like update, boom, now I change which buttons these are. Red still does its red thing even though it's in a new location. Okay, so I'll say here, validate is necessary to uh, refresh the changed 
monthly component hierarchy. Okay. Questions on this? So anytime you change the component hierarchy on your GUI window and you want that to be updated and what people see, you got to call this validate method. If you don't, stuff's not going to, it's going to do weird things. Now, sometimes it can work. Like if you're just adding one extra component to something, it can get implemented successfully, but you shouldn't depend on that. You should, anytime you add new things or remove things, should call validate. It is a good practice. Okay. All right. Rebuilding GUI. So one way to handle all of these uh, significant GUI changes is with custom JPanel subclasses. For example, if you have two different uh, configurations for your window, you could pre-build them both at the start when the application begins. You could start the one, build the one version of the panel, build the other version of the version of the panel, and just have them waiting. And then when you need to switch to one or the other, you can just swap them out. So you could remove one panel with the remove method and then add the other. Okay, so for example, a uh, simple idea of how it works here. If you have two J panels, JP, first remove JP, then refresh JP's reference to point to a different panel and then add that one and then it'll work again. Call repaint, call validate, call repaint, whatever. This uh, example here, let me update that as well. That should just be a JP. Makes more, I mean, GP2 will work, but JP is the point. Save that. Okay, I'm going to save this. Since I made a couple changes. Okay, colors. We've talked about colors. Spend a few minutes on that. So, all J components have two color attributes. The first one, the foreground, anything you draw on it with custom graphics like text or polygons that's gonna be that foreground color. And we just do that with the set color attribute of the graphics brush. The background color, on the other hand, you call the set background method for that component. And it's basically a solid fill on the entire thing. Uh, you can also do it directly through the graphics object in paint. So if we do again, protected void paint component graphics G, you can draw it that way. That's, that's the easiest way to do it. And of course, anything drawn on the component with the foreground is gonna override the background. That's the whole point of the difference between foreground and background. What you change is gonna be the foreground color. Okay, last little thing, something called transparency. So again, there's another uh, effect, Graphics 2D has something called transparency. So I'll do a little bit of the background of this, what's going on. So normally our colors, are 24-bit RGB, okay? Colors are normally 24-bit RGB unless we specifically use a simpler palette, right? Simpler group of colors. There are some different formats for that. Uh, with transparency, we need another value called the alpha which indicates, indicates how much of the initial color underneath will still be visible through the new color on top. Okay, that's what the alpha is. And there are again, different formats for doing that, but the most common one is something called RGBA, which is, 24 bits for RGB plus eight more bits for the alpha. Okay, now we'll show you how that uh, gets implemented here in Java. So here I have a little uh, thing here. We're just gonna copy this uh, text here. There you go, we can lift that. And we'll put it in our code. So what do we have here? This is gonna be our paint component. So we have this rectangle already. So we're gonna have here a transparency example. Okay. So again, here I'm gonna have a new graphics brush. I'm gonna convert it to graphics 2DG. Uh, that's fine. And 
for this one, I'm going to draw, uh, have a number from 1 to 20. This alpha composite basically use this alpha composite to create the blended colors. Okay, so whatever the initial color is, I'm going to give it some fraction of whatever I'm drawing on top of it. Okay, and then we're going to set its composite to this. So essentially, right, all of this line here, which is going to be our blended color, I'm going to set that as the composite color that I'm drawing with the brush. And then I'm going to fill a bunch of rectangles. So let's, I'm going to draw them down below. I'm just going to set this 525 to uh, 720, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to have a row of uh, different color windows that will be gradually faded in. So let's save this and we can run it. See, am I short a parenthesis? Yeah, I am. Okay, so I need to include that in my slides as well, apparently. Oh, no, I just didn't copy it. Okay, good. So let's run this and we'll uh, see how this happens. Whoops. That's weird. Okay, didn't mean to do that. I'm just going to get this stuff a little bit neater. Let's run this, see how it goes. Boom, see, there we get it. So over here, if you look, this very first one, there's total transparency, right? This purple that I drew on top, it's not even visible, right? All I see is the green underneath. Hey, sweetie. Uh, as I go further along, it becomes, right, entirely not transparent, entirely opaque, and all I see is the purple. So I can see this blended change, and it looks kind of weird, uh, green and purple blended together, or magenta, but that's what it looks like. So I get this kind of transparency effect. Here it just really looks like black, but that is what it is. Okay. Oh, that's why. I'm not, yeah, I'm starting at, that's the XY. I'm making very long rectangles. So I'm going to do, uh, sorry, this is what I meant to do. 500, and then the width will be uh, 25, let's do, yeah, 25, and then I guess 100 height and width, width and height, 25, let's try that. Sorry, things went a little, yeah, if I could do that, that'd be a stubbier one. Let's do it the other way. Vivi, please, just turn it off. There we go. So here again, same transparency, but it's a little clearer what's going on, okay? So over on the left, totally transparent, don't see, uh, don't see anything of the purple color I was drawing on top. So I go over this way, it eventually becomes completely opaque and I don't even see a tiny bit of the green underneath, right? So this purple here on the right exactly matches this big color on top. Okay, so that's that's transparency. And again, this thing here, this alpha composite source over, that just says, yeah, okay, I'm gonna do a standard composite. And then the value here, this I times 0.05 F, well, okay, F means float, by the way, so here, I'll write up how this works. I times 0 0.05, I'll say uh, 0 0.05 F means I cast the double to a float, because that's what it takes, it's a shorter thing. And then zero, right, low values close to zero mean what? Mean totally transparent. High values close to one mean totally opaque. Okay, and that's why, we, shh, sweetie, that's why we see the things that we see with our transparency. Okay, questions on any of this stuff that we covered? Any questions at all? 
How's everybody? How y'all doing? I'm going to stop the share for a moment. What's happening? Graphics make sense. You can probably all replicate this on your own, I hope. I hope. I hope because there will be an assignment and you'll have to replicate some of this on your own. All right. If there are no questions, this will conclude our session. Uh, the only other thing I have again, Wednesday, we'll start talking about doing timers and we'll implement some uh, timer based animation effects. That'll be kind of fun. And then, I don't know, we'll see what we do. See how much time all that takes. All right, that's all I got then. It's been a hoot. See y'all in a couple of days.